Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours, your one-stop shop for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, with a focus on VR. In today's video, I'll be showcasing my best VR settings for the Reverb G2. I've spent a lot of time dialing in these settings and have managed to get my best results in terms of smoothness and graphics. Things have definitely changed since update six, and I'll explain the various settings I've set to get the best VR performance possible. Please remember this video is based on my PC and my setup, which is a 3080 GPU and a 10900K processor. If you have a 1000 or 2000 series card, I suggest you follow my settings, but turn each setting down by one or two and see how it runs. This video is intended to be used as a guide, and I really hope it helps you get the best out of your VR setup for your own system. So like I said, if you do have a different type of graphics card or processor, use my guide as a starting point and just tinker slightly with some of the settings and you should be able to get a similar performance I'm getting. I do want to say thanks to you guys for adding all your comments and feedback about how things are going since the update, and a big shout out to Led Zeppelin for his insight regarding some graphic settings, as well as Maher Justice, Uva, aka The Shark, and Chris Pope for providing all your support and knowledge in my Discord, which you are all welcome to join, as we have a wealth of resources and knowledgeable simmers discussing all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've made this channel to share and showcase this amazing sim, and I really appreciate all of you in the community for making virtual flight such a rewarding hobby. And without further ado, let's have a look at the settings. So the first thing we're gonna have a look at is the NVIDIA control panel settings, and the 3D settings in particular. I won't go through each and every setting here, but I do want to highlight a few important changes that I've made since the update. So for the settings on this list that I don't discuss, you can just use this as a reference point to copy my settings. The main change I've done here is I've capped the max frame rate at 32 FPS. The reason why I'm doing this is because it limits the fluctuations between the frame times and the frame rates. You may remember from my last video that I was discussing the Cap Frame X software, and I've been using this to determine the best frame rate to be capped at. And for my system, it seems to be 32. So by capping the frame rate, the objective is to try and get as much consistency in the frames and frame times as possible. And this gives me an overall better performance in terms of smoothness. You can also see the other settings I've changed, such as the texture filtering, anisotropic sample option is on, texture filtering quality is performance, texture filtering trilinear optimization is on, threaded optimization is off, vertical sync is on, and virtual reality pre-rendered frames is set to two. I have been tinkering with this quite a bit, but I do find that two is the best setting here. So these are my NVIDIA 3D settings, and you can use that as a guide to set yours up. And just to remind you that I'm using the latest NVIDIA driver, number 496.13. Here you can see I've got game mode switched off and hag switched off. I tried both with them switched on and I wasn't getting as good performance. So that's why I'm recommending that you turn them both off. Next we have the OpenXR developer tool settings. Here you can see I've got the latest preview OpenXR runtime turned on and the custom render scale is set to 100, which as some of you all know, is an increase compared to my last video, which we set that at 80, and that's due to the update. Motion reprojection is disabled. I've tried it with it enabled and automatic, and I'm just getting too many artifacts and too many distractions visually. Therefore, I'm using it disabled. The whole idea, guys, is to get the best performance and the best clarity combined. Therefore, I highly recommend you turn off motion reprojection. Unless you're having real problems with the frame rates, try to avoid turning this on. However, some of you do like motion projection, so go ahead and keep using it. It's just my recommendation. Next, we have the Windows Mixed Reality settings, and just go ahead and use this as a guide and copy the settings into your own system. The main settings here are the resolution is set to best quality and the frame rate is at 90 hertz. And if you are having problems with flashing headsets, like if it flashes black or if it stops working, try running it with 60 hertz and see if it improves. And failing that, you should contact HP directly and they'll send you a new cable which should work flawlessly. So that's my advice. I wouldn't spend too much time trying to fix it if it's flashing black. Just contact HP and they'll sort you out on your cable. Next, let's take a look at the in-game sim settings. First, we'll look at the VR settings. And the first thing you'll notice is that I've got the render scaling set to 80. What I did here is start at 100 and it did run fine using 100 render. However, I was getting some slight micro stutters inside the cockpit and at low altitude which is a bit disappointing because I thought with update six, I'd be able to run it at 100, 100. I can, but I prefer not to. Remember, I'm looking for that balance between performance and clarity. So what I did, I worked my way down from 100 in increments of five, 
and I ended up finding that 80 was giving me the best performance. I wasn't just doing this by playing it and seeing, I was using the Cap Framework software to help me determine this. So with the render scale set to 80, this gives me the smoothest performance possible. I've got the anti-aliasing set to TAA. Another interesting setting here I've got is terrain level of detail is set to 220. Now I'm aware that it goes up to 400 and some of you may be thinking, oh, he's got a 3080, he can jam it all the way up to 400. I can, but I lose that smoothness. So again, what I did, I just worked my way down from 400 and tested and tested until I got the best performance in terms of smoothness and I stuck with 220. The off-screen terrain pre-caching is set to ultra. The terrain vector detail is set to high. Buildings, trees, grass and bushes are all set to medium. Objects level of detail is set to 125 because it gave me the smoothest experience possible. Volumetric clouds are set to high. Texture resolution is set to high. Anisotropic filtering is set to eight times. Texture supersampling six times six. Texture synthesis high. Water waves high. Shadow maps 1024. Terrain shadows 512. Contact shadows high. Windshield effects high. Ambient occlusion low. Cube map reflections 256. Ray march reflections are high. Light shafts are low. Bloom is off. And glass cockpit refresh rate is set to high. And as I said at the start of the video, if you're running a different car than the 3080, I suggest you pull down some of these settings. For example, the render scale, you might want to pull it down to 70 and see how that runs. But if you don't want to do that and you're seeing some pixelation, I recommend you take a look at all the other settings and just drop them by one or two. I'd probably turn off the ambient occlusion first and definitely tinker with those LOD sliders, working your way down from my settings. You might also want to turn the volumetric clouds down a bit, but I know a lot of people don't like doing that because they love the clouds so much. So that's just up to you. Just mess around with the different settings and see what works for you, but use this as a guide to get you started. And if you have any questions or problems with the settings, just let us know in the comment section below and I'll see if I can help you. Next we have the traffic settings and you can see I'm playing in real time online with nameplates turned on. My airport life is set to 100 apart from the ground airport density which is set to 10. This is because I'm using various other software to give me realistic airline liveries and traffic. You can see a link to the video above and I highly recommend it. This explains why I've got this setting set so low. The land and sea traffic are all set to 100. These are slightly different settings to my realistic sea traffic video which is linked above and it comes back to personal preference. I've chosen to only run the seafront simulation software instead of using any other mods and that's why I've maxed out these settings. And you can see I've got the generic plane models for AI traffic switched on. And this is linked to my realistic air traffic and liveries tutorial for that to work. And I've got the generic plane models for multiplayer turned off so I can see other people's liveries when they have the same ones as me if they're customized. And the traffic variety is set to ultra. If you do have a slower internet connection, you might want to turn some of these settings right down to try and help with the bandwidth. And the last setting I'm going to have a quick look at is the data settings. And you can see here I've got everything turned on. I've got unlimited data bandwidth usage. I've got the rolling cache turned on with a limit of 100 gigabytes. You can see that the rolling cache path is actually my D drive, which just gives me more space. And I always recommend deleting your cache after every update. So hopefully using these settings will help you guys get your own systems running as smoothly with the most clarity as possible using the Reverb G2. And remember, if you've got a different type of card, just notch down the settings and see what you can get based on my guide. And if you are interested in adding more realistic elements to the simulator, check out this useful playlist here. As always guys, I hope this video helped you get dialed in with your VR settings, and I really do look forward to seeing you in the skies again soon. And as always, take care and stay safe.